how y'all doing today? This is Jason Moore. Of course, I have a special guest, the extraordinary, super talented, multi-talented. We have Jay Hill, producer, songwriter, DJ, you name it, she does it. So first of all, I would like to say thank you so much uh, for coming out. I really appreciate that. Thank you for taking an interest in me, Jason. Oh, how could I not? Like, when I came across, so cool. you know, your whole, you know, social media, I see how super talented you are. I just, like, had to share your story. I think you have a, a fascinating story that I'm sure people will definitely, you know, appreciate. So Thanks. let's take let's take a walk down, uh, you know, your memory lane. So how did you get started? Like, um, first of all, you're a DJ and a producer. So which what came first? So um, I actually started as um, a copywriter in I writing bios and press kits for um, for D big DJs and, and other producers. And how I came into that right, right. Um, was I had I was living in LA in Hollywood, and I had mm -hmm. a, um, a boyfriend at the time that was a really good a very advanced um, music producer and uh, DJ and he really got me into electronic music nice, and you know nice. we were going out raving and all that stuff well then he had actually pushed me to start the business this was kind of on the tail end of the dot-com in California right, right. where you could kind of do anything so I started this business called the writing studio and um, I ended up through landing some interviews with a couple really big DJs. Oh, that's dope. I got wow. connected with um, their booking agents and such and and you know somebody said to me, "Hey, you should you should really try to learn DJing, you know, right, just right. so you understand where these guys are coming from and where, right, right. you know." And um, and so that's what I did. I took um, I took some DJ lessons. Okay. In, um, so in, what was in that like taking, you know, DJ lessons? I mean, especially being, you know, female in the, you know, uh, DJ producing look. So how did that all work? So I was actually, it was a bartender in LA also at that time. Oh, okay, okay. And there was a promoter that came into the club, um, who I'm still friends with on <laughs> Facebook, right, right. which is amazing because it's been about 13 years now. And he was offering to give DJ le lessons, and he, but he was teaching on vinyl. Oh, okay. And and so I actually thought, you know, I was breaking up with a boyfriend at the time, and I was kind of like, I'm gonna one up him, and like, yeah. I'm gonna become a DJ. This is gonna be the payback. For the payback. <laughs> <laughs> and it ended up happening. Like I really, you know, in, in the beginning, I just had. Um, you know, had an intention to do the DJing, so I understood, you know, for the writing business, what, um, you know, what, you know, I the guys that I interviewed with, the over in Europe and stuff, they were talking about like yeah. house and techno, mm -hmm. and I was so intrigued by it, you mm -hmm. know, and it just, it's just something that just totally naturally grew, and I ended up then um, in 2012, I decided to move to New York City okay. and like give it a go, like right, really right. give mm -hmm. it a go. And um, and it's really amazing how all the steps then happened from there right, and right. the people that I met and that gave me a shot in New York. Nice. And and then it just evolved from there. And then, yeah. And, it, and I'm sure that's, you know, kind of rare too, like far yeah. as New York. I would like to say New York is like, you know, it's like the belly of the beast, right? Yeah. Like, you know, the old saying, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. So yeah. what was that like, like making these type of, you know, connection and how did it kind of like blossom into like other things as far as your, your connection? I think, I, I honestly think that it was a fate thing because just by happen chance, like, you know, the, even the way that I met the first um, promoter that booked me in a club and at that club I met um, another um, a phenomenal New York City DJ who then taught me how to really spin on vinyl right, right. and I ended up producing um, music with him later on and, and just all those little things like if those dots didn't connect they <laughs> I wouldn't be here right now right, right. but 
but it all worked out and I, you know, at the time I really, you know, when I got to New York and the, the way that the house and the techno scene was at that time was so, it was really big. And it was, you know, the energy of it was so exciting and people were throwing parties all over the place nice, in Bro nice, nice. Brooklyn and warehouses and, you know, and underground train stations and, you know, like the scene was just going crazy. And so, um, you know, somehow I navigated through it and, but, but it was a hustle. I call it the New York City DJ hustle. boot camp yeah. <laughs> because... <laughs> I mean, I was still, I was, you know, freelancing at a day job at some mm -hmm, music, mm -hmm. and right, I right, was, right. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I, I got into, because, uh, you know, one thing that I discovered along the way is that you can't wait for other people to, you know, to book right. you and to call call you up. You got to make stuff happen, mm -hmm. and Pick so. Pick up the phones, email, social media, whatever it takes to kind of get yourself out there. So, yeah. do you felt yeah. like it was, like, a big challenge, especially, um, you know, being a female in this industry, right? And it's still dominated by males. Obviously, you, there's things have evolved. You've seen so many, you know, female DJs who are killing it. You know, who are really killing it. So, did you find it to be, you know, more of a challenge as a dominant, you know, um, you know, male industry as far as being a female um, breaking into this whole business? Yeah, it it was especially in those early years. It was, you know, it was like a lot of people didn't want to book you or give you a chance because there was this like wacko mindset that like oh girls can't DJ as right, good right. as we can you Stigma, know exactly <laughs> right. and and so but you know I always had it in my mind I'm gonna prove them wrong mm -hmm. and I'm gonna and and that's why I really I really worked on not just like getting involved in the party scene but figuring out like what kind of a DJ set do I need to do to really like to make this crowd go freaking wild, to take these people on a journey so that they're, you know, shazamming, they're looking up, who's this, right, right. you know, well, I thought it was a boy, Jay Hill, but it's a girl, you know, how, how do I create that? And not in an egotistical way, but how do I, you know, you know, I found something in, like, I found, I'm talented at doing this, I'm talented at making a you know creating when I'm up on the decks creating this experience and you know that's a, a communal experience right, where right. people mm -hmm. on the take them away from their problems for a couple hours and get lost in music and and fitting the music together so it it, it accomplishes that and it builds tension and it builds this right, right. this you know so let me ask yeah. you like so. I, I'm I'm appreciating this you know whole interview I can definitely you know feel the whole passion so I'm curious, um, so who, you know, who inspired you to kind of like, you know, get into the whole house and techno scene? Is there any artists out there that you, that inspired you to kind of like, you know? Yes, yeah, there are many. And, and what I will say though, is that what I found is that I had a, um, a connection with those people that I had, those DJs that I had a live experience with okay, okay. to where um, there were so many producers that I really um, I was really drawn to their music um, you know for listening sake right, but right. then the DJs that could really like you know do amazing things with with you know the way they build their DJ sets and the transitions and the you know or vinyl and stuff and one is um, um, I started when I moved here to the East Coast. I started to also um, start to go to Detroit and nice. to get okay. into the techno scene there, which is, a, you know, it's a big, big techno scene. And um, and I saw Jeff Mills once, and he at the time, um, like Richie Houghton, who's a big, you know, big Detroit techno producer. He was Jeff Mills' like vinyl catcher, and Jeff was literally. I was so like blown away by the fact that you know this guy had like you know his sta his his crate full of records <laughs> and nice. he's pulling stuff out nice. <laughs> and he's putting it on okay. and then he's flying it and then you know and uh Richie Houghton was and 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 that that you know when you experience something like that in the flesh you go whoa like this is this is so much deeper than just you know repetitive you know 4/4 music this is this is so much deeper than that and it just you know it was all these things like 
um, that ended up, you know, kind of building these experiences. And in New York, um, I saw, for house music, I saw Carrie Chandler. He was another nice, one. Nice, nice, okay. Um, and then, you know, people that have become really good friends, Sid mm -hmm. Vaga, the one that I was, um, that I, I met at, at my first gig who, you know, taught me vinyl and is also my um, producing a mentor and such. You know, I also, same thing, I, I would sit in the DJ booth and watch him and just go, right. oh my God, like. It, it, it ignited a yeah, fire inside you. Yeah, yeah. So let, yeah. Me, um, let me also ask you, so w where do you see, you know, this whole house and techno scene going forward within, you know, the next, you know, five years? Where do you see this, you know, I think, music going? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, that I, I truly believe that, you know, pa the pandemic was actually like a good it was a reset that this industry needed for various reasons. Mm -hmm. um, the the business of making music aspect of it is you know is tough to navigate through. Right, right. But um, but I think that you know for the the artists that and DJs that made it out you know through the pandemic and still are you know are doing this and pursuing it. Right, it's right, right. now kind of weeded out a more um, refined, like a more qu quality, at least in my opinion, because right, right. I, I think there were a lot of, you know, bedroom DJs right, and right. stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, during, before the pandemic. And so I think now, and it's, um, I, I see, I do see it getting back to how big it was, but it's going to take, you know, a bit of time. And, you know, we've been through this world is just like, move in so fast and 100%. there's things, you know, and, and I also, this is a little bit tied into, you know, some of my advice for new, you know, DJs and producers that want to get into this is like, you know, what we've learned from this is that you've got to, you've got to find a way, you've got to find your core, your center and build a bubble around yourself right, right, and right. find mm -hmm. ways to not, you know, to really, um, to, you know, cut out all the noise of, everything that's going on, pandemic, you know, mm -hmm. politics, world, put that all you know, aside. War, you got to put that aside to find your, find your center and find, you know, where in, you got to hone in your skills. And th this is an industry where you, you know, let's face it, unless you're a wedding DJ, yep. mm -hmm. you cannot make it as that's only right. a DJ. That's you right. got to do other things. And so, um, I do think that, um, that the industry is, uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to blow up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. back to where it was with, right, right. you know, but, but that's a good thing because the industry was going very commercial mm -hmm. and I'm talking about more the underground community, um, which, you know, was, we all like hated it, you right, know, right. the commercial aspect of it. And, so and let me ask see, you something, yeah. is, is most shows like during the week or weekends, like how does that most of these... It, yeah, well, you know, I mean, it, it's different in different scenes. Like in New York, the clubs are open until like four o'clock. Um, you know, bars are open until four, so they can have m more, you know, nights like even on a weeknight. Whereas it does here in Philly and in in places, you know, like where I grew up in California, um, where there's a two a.m. You know, it makes the weeknights a little bit tougher. Right, right. Um, especially when people are driving and working, you know, and. and working crowd but um but um you know I think now it's like you've got I mean Miami Ultra Festival is coming mm -hmm. back this year huge, you've got huge. like the festival that mm -hmm. you're doing in Texas you know there and I feel like last year you know it was people were you know some people were doing it and then they things had to get canceled and stuff and so I feel like this is the year it's like okay this is yep. <laughs> we're back and I think this summer will be which is kind of you know the the high season for for our DJs, I think, will be a real telltale sign of kind of how you know we're able to move forward, especially you know with other things going on in the world, and just like you know because people need to people uh, we need to we need to have our party nights. We 100%. need to have our nights of of detaching in a fun and healthy way, and to get away from you know, all the noise and get away from our electronics and our social mm -hmm. media and all that stuff and just like get lost in music mm -hmm. and get lost They're in, They're so therapeutic. You know? So let's, um, first of all, thank you for this amazing vinyl record. You're welcome. It's just amazing <laughs> what it says, uh, 
Dragons? Dragons, yeah. Dragons. Check this out. This is really amazing. So tell us about your producing side, which is incredible, you know, super talented of yourself. So I'm curious about, you know, your whole producing side. Okay. What's that process like? Yeah, so um, during that time I was in New York where the scene was really changing and where females really had to, like, you know, prove ourselves. Like, right, right. we had to go above and beyond, I decided to go back to um, school. I went to audio engineering school. Oh. Wow, you're really deep into it. You know, some people, they're just so self-taught. They maybe, you know, yeah. kind of watch, you know, videos and stuff like that. Or they just kind of like, kind of like following people around to kind of learn these different techniques. But you actually went to school. I think that's a whole nother level. <laughs> <laughs> because I need, uh, I need, uh, the reason for that is, is that I need somebody to show me how to do it live in person, like, you know, it's, um, electronic music is very co complicated, people do, you know, yes, there are these, you know, kids that can somehow figure out how to throw things together and maybe a one-hit wonder for a little while, but, um, but, for me, like, I just, I needed that foundation of, you know, because it was so foreign to me from mm -hmm. anything that I had done previously with music, you know, from my childhood or, or what have you. And, um, and actually through that, um, the school that I went to is called SAE. I ended up meeting, you know, a guy who was A&R for one of the biggest, for Nervous Records, one of the biggest, mm -hmm. you know, house labels in New York. And I met, you know, a bunch of other people that were, um, that were just really passionate about, and I found, I still needed to, and I still continue, I just took a, a lesson the other day from someone because I, it, it's a, it's a journey, you know, it, that builds and builds and builds over time. And it's not a, um, I, I say like this, being in this, in the, you know, underground house and techno, you know, seen as a DJ and a producer, record label owner, like this is a marathon. This is not a right, sprint, right. Mm -hmm. you know, exactly. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the beauty of it is that it, this is an industry that people value tenure. They value experience and time. Yes. Yes. And, and so if, for a time you're not getting like a bunch of bookings, that's not a reflection of you. It's just a reflection of you, you probably, you need to be, have more time to, it takes a while to build your name and to really, you know, um, um, get your name out there. But the productions are what, as a DJ, get my name out around the world. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I was at that time too, where it's like, I needed another, I was, you know, heavily into throwing parties and in, in so you used to throw you, so you used to throw your own parties. Is that what yeah, it is? yeah, okay. and I, I, I would book big DJs through my connections from my writing company with the booking agents, and so that's actually how I built a name for myself in the New York scene Smart. pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Is that people Smart. saw saw these big names coming in and were like, who was throwing the party? And it was me. So then I kind of you know navigated my way through that. But, so um, to to yeah. add on, you know, yeah. um, your whole producing. So um, what made you start your label? Like, what's that like? Are you looking to sign artists? Are you collab? Like, what's that like? You know, starting your um, label. Yeah, this is. I have to say, like, this is a super. I I never thought I was going to do my own record label I was like no I'm not doing this because um you know it's just too much work and all this stuff right, right. and it is a lot of work but um so the uh my label is called people of the light that's a sticker p-o-t-l is the... people of the light <laughs> um and um I really you know I I um, somehow timed it to where like I started the label just as the pandemic hit okay but that, so it's relatively new. But so that, it's a new one. yeah, it's okay. very very new. But that that worked out perfectly because during lockdown, then I had time to figure out how how to you know I had to switch gears to you know artist and DJ to business owner right, you know right. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's a very different a very different thing. But it worked out beautifully. That but the intention of it initially was like okay, I'm just going to use this as a you know, a label just to throw my own back catalog of demos, that unsigned demos. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And and it's evolved. And then I was like, 
no, I, I don't want it. I don't want this label just to be my own music. Like I, I started to have a vision for it. Like I wanted to do label nights and parties around the world and, you know, but intentionally not like I was in New York where I was just like grinding, you know, right. and, mm -hmm. um, but, um, and, um, and then I decided to bring in a, a partner to really, that had a, a amazing, he has an amazing music, especially underground music industry, mm -hmm. which is so niche, but mindset, and he, he just... And I'm sure connections, too, it. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and connections, and also he's great at social media, which is something that I'm terrible at. Well, that's, so, that's <laughs> why it's so important, right? You know, you, you have to have someone who's stronger than this area. Maybe I'm not right. great with social media, but I'm great with kind of email and talking on the phones or kind of like, you know, so... I think it's very important. Yeah, I, yeah, and matches. I think it's like you, you know he compliments me in all these areas, and also you know it was it was tough to like during you know lockdown to get excited about things when yep. we didn't mm -hmm. with all the uncertainty, mm -hmm. but he like came into it with such a positive and you know such a positive mindset, and it really like you know it elevated me and the label, and so now we are. We're doing our first vinyl record. Wow. It's on the congratulations. Thank that's, you. That's awesome. Congratulations. We are so excited about it and how it's come together, and um, and it's on the presses in England right now. And so, um, and then we we also just signed our first artist. That's not our music, but you know that is all completely their own. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and we, you know, we're starting to like get this vision of of getting the, the brand and the name out there um, much greater than, than we can, you know? So, um, and, and that happens by, you know, giving other, pe other artists, bringing the them platform. in. Yep. Yeah, them and bringing them, yep. them in as, but as not just, you know, okay, we're gonna sign your, your record and then we're, we'll put it up and we'll be done with you. No, it's like the artists that we've, that we've worked with so far with remixes and stuff like we've, they're their family you know right, right. and mm -hmm. we we stay in contact it's not this you know mm -hmm. and so and intentionally you know um over time when we are able to start doing you know label parties and stuff and um then you know it's just gonna we're gonna have this extension of of the brand so well, but that's so yeah. amazing you know and um <clears throat> i appreciate your time this has been you know, such a pleasure, you know, this whole interview and this whole experience, you know. I think you have a great journey and I see your whole talent and I see where you're going. You're, you're, you know, you're definitely going places and I appreciate everything you're doing. Thank so you. is there That's any perfect. upcoming shows that people can potentially come and check out? Um, what you got going on? <laughs> Next weekend, I have um, actually my first gig in a while and it's in, um, it's near Detroit. It's in Grand oh, Rapids, Michigan. Oh, so going to the Grand Rapids. Yeah. Oh, never. Nice. Never been there, so I'm excited about that. And then I have some things cooking in in England, in um, okay. maybe you know international, a, a baby, international. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and and my and our my music is really big. Uh, you know, it's bigger over in mm -hmm. in the UK and Europe, and so it's kind of. Um, but um, yeah, and hopefully it's like one thing kind of, you know, ripples off off the next thing and so it's you know it's unpredictable but that's the exciting thing about it and so um yeah so i'm just like all with all these things these exciting things happening with the label or vinyl and then you know with with some gigs you know starting to come through and be a little bit more um consistent like i'm i'm really positive that that you know things are going to be and, and that's not just about about getting gigs and, and playing gigs because my focus is really on now on my my goals or right, on right. the new tracks and productions that I'm making and mm -hmm, the demos mm -hmm. and hopefully getting them signed by some bigger labels and and um, you got this and because you have the drive the journey. Yeah. you have the drive it's it's gonna happen it's not if it will happen it's gonna right <laughs> thank you you know because yeah. You know, the, the talent speaks for itself, and I don't know, you know, just having a great energy is what you put out there, and, you know, not to sound cliche, what you put out there, you're definitely going to get that back on turn, but I see your determination, you went to school for the past, this is what you meant to do, single-handedly, yeah. so <laughs> keep up the great work, you got this, and um, if 
people can, you know, get to know you, like maybe your social media handles yeah. and where can they listen to your music. I'm also going to um, include um, different links to her music and a bio and all that amazing stuff. So would you like to share? Sure. Yeah. Um, so on, on Instagram, I am at Lejay Hill. So Lejay is my favorite uh, liqueur, by the okay. way, French. Um, <laughs> so oui, 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 oui. <laughs> <laughs> um, on uh, Facebook, I'm uh, facebook.com backslash Lady J Hill. On SoundCloud, I am soundcloud.com backslash J Neuf, J A Y N E U F in French. Um, and then where else? Uh, my record label, People of the Light, is at We Are P O T L. Um, on everything, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. <laughs> Go it so. all. So it was a pleasure. So, thank you so much. much. Thank Cheers. You. Drink Cheers. up. And that's a wrap, baby. <laughs> <laughs>